Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is a, a recent acquisition of mine. This is a Boyer Schultz 612 Deluxe. And I just love that logo right there. That thing just looks like a 57 Chevy. Isn't that beautiful? Um, but I've got, uh, this one's got a built-in dust collector. And I took, I took the bag house out of it. But back there you can see the blower motor. And uh, there's a series of bags that go in here. And I have them removed right now. And then there's a drawer down at the bottom that collects all the debris. Now I had this in the back of my truck when I first got this machine and uh, well I actually started out with a shovel there's the tray right there and just some of the stuff that was in there it was piled up pretty good uh, but it was overflowing uh, I took two scoops out with a shovel moved on to a six inch putty knife and I filled are you ready for this three five gallon buckets full of junk right there so that's the bottom tray um, there's the front door, of course, and then it has a very interesting bag system. It uses these canvas bags here. They're on a metal frame, and they're all in good shape. can't believe for as old as this thing is that the canvas isn't torn anywhere. And then it's got a, it's got a felt seal along here. But they sit uh, in rows down inside of that cabinet. And it's kind of an updraft, so everything comes in below the filter and, and flows upwards through the uh, through these bags. Now this is interesting. They've got these brushes in here. This is like a nylon bristle, and uh, they actually sit. These go right inside of each one of these uh, bag filters, and there's a rod in there that actually takes and turns these. So uh, it's a manually operated rod. And uh, when you turn the rod, these things sweep side to side and clean out the, uh, the filter. Uh, and then there, there's these screens that go in between each filter to keep them from uh, collapsing against each other and choking themselves off. But I'm going to show you where that rod is. This was, this was pretty clever, I thought. There's a rod right here. Let's give it a quarter turn. I'll go around the inside and show you where that rod actually goes. There's a series of holes down that full rod. And this thing just sweeps side to side inside of those uh, bag filters and allows all the debris to drop out below to the drawer underneath. And uh, I've run the blower. The blower runs really good. Uh, very quiet. A lot, of, uh, a lot of air volume. So I'm going to get this dust collector working. Uh, it was very clogged when it came to me. Uh, that's the intake uh, pipe right there. And it just gets a flex hose here and flexes up to a, a cover. Here I've got two bolt holes here and there's a cover and the dust collector outlet is right here to the side because it always throws its sparks to the left. Um, but... Uh, I thought that was pretty interesting the way that dust collector was arranged. Very clever. And I think this machine is 50s. I still have to look up the serial number if there's a if there's a, a table or chart available. Um, I have a little bit of spindle noise. Let me go ahead and turn it on. I've got this hooked up temporarily with a VFD just to... Uh, just to run it. And the spindle runs fairly quiet. It's got a little bit of noise that comes and goes. And I think there's some, uh, there's a dust shield right back there. Um, right there. And I think there's grit in between the dust shield and the first bearing. And I, I think that's where I'm getting my noises that uh, come and go and come and go. But, uh, Overall, very smooth machine. Table um, goes back and forth very, very nicely. Um, the speed works really nicely. Um, I did, have checked it with a dial indicator uh, from side to side here. 
and the table, the movement vertically is within half a thou, running this way. And then I swept it front to back, and it's within, again, a half a thou front to back. And I haven't even reground this table yet. It's in, as you can see, there's quite a bit of surface rust. But uh, from what I understand, uh, just regrinding a magnetic chuck is not a big deal. Just use a flat wheel and uh, dress it up real nice and, and take off your fence and regrind your table to, to match it to the uh, machine. So from what I understand, that's not a huge no-no. But uh, uh, what I am going to do, this is a three-phase machine and I don't, do not have three-phase here at the shop. Um, since I am running two motors, there's two three-phase motors. What was funny is I, when I bought this, um, the previous owner had a 230 volt shop and was complaining that the thing wasn't making any power. And uh, he had the motor wired for 480 and running it on 230. So it, it, at that point, it's low on RPM. Doesn't hurt the motor, but it's low on RPM and it's low on horsepower. So uh, I, I dug into the motor just out of curiosity and uh, it was uh, it was wired for high volt and he was running it on low volt. So I, I checked that just for uh, just for grins and uh, I still need to check the uh, the dust collector to see if it's wired high or low. Um, what I am going to do is I'm going to run both of these motors off of a common VFD and this is this this might be a, a good segment for another video for a good VFD application is how to run dissimilar motors on a VFD. Now my spindle motor is one horse and my blower motor is half horse. And what we have to do is protect them separately for overload. And I'll go into detail on that, on how to do it with a, with a, a single VFD. Uh, there's, a, there's a little bit of criteria there and a few things have to happen to make that work um, you have to want to control the motors simultaneously. You, you, you have to want to start them and stop them and ramp them up and ramp them down all at the same time. You cannot have individual control of the motors. So, uh, that has to be one of the criteria. And then the other one is the motor protection. You have to protect the motor separately and wire it back to the control stop circuit so that if either motor uh, has a, an alarm or an overload condition, uh, the VFD is going to shut down because uh, uh, one VFD running two motors can't protect the individual motors because all it looks at is the outgoing uh, line line uh, amperage and uh, not the uh, not the individual line amperage. Um, it does have a Bijour oiler, and I, I've been manually. You just pull this plunger up slowly, and you let it down. You can see it's slowly taking it down, and it does oil the table, and you fill here. Um, but inside of here, and this is disconnected, and I'm hoping someone out there knows what the heck this is. It, it, there's a little electric motor in here, and uh, it runs down to this box, and it, and it is disconnected right now. And uh, it doesn't even have a voltage stated on it, so I was kind of hoping someone out there knows what if this automatic oiler if it runs on 110 volt or how do i tell what voltage it is whether it's full line voltage or, or actually what it is um i'd like to enable that if i can and if i need to run separate 110 volt up here i will uh, i'm going to have it up here for the work light anyway so uh if, if this needs to be energized only when the machine's running with 110 volt or whatever um, I've taken this cover off and looked inside, and there's a little gold, uh, looks like a motor, it's round, and there's two leads coming out of it, and uh, nowhere on it is it stamped voltage, amperage, anything, so it's, uh, it's kind of a mystery. So I've been manually oiling, but I'd like to get the automatic oiler working. So anyways, <clears throat> that's my new Boyer Schultz, new to me at least. And uh, I think I'm going to be happy with it after I get this that dust collector all cleaned out. It, uh, you know, just a little bit of surface grinding I've done already. This thing makes a hell of a lot of dust, and it's messy. 
and you're breathing it in and you're getting it in your eyes and it's going everywhere and uh, with a dust with with a constant vacuum on this uh, on this hood that'd be nice um, just picking up whatever comes off of that wheel uh, now this came to me exactly like this so I'm I am gonna have to actually fabricate this wheel cover with the dust collection outlet probably gonna put like a rubber flap down here on the bottom where it can where it picks up a little bit better and there's no chance it ever sparks flying below the dust collector but uh, I think uh, I think uh, I think I know a guy that's reasonably decent with sheet metal I think we can get that done and then this was an interesting tidbit it's got a forward and reverse switch and I'm kind of wondering why anyone would ever want to run it in reverse it didn't make any sense to me why would someone would put a drum switch on there why you would want to run a spindle in reverse and risk spinning that nut off because it's got a reverse thread and when you run it in forward everything is tightening itself but you weren't running it in reverse why, why would you want to do that so i guess those are my two questions one is the uh is that Bijou or Euler? And the other one is, why why on earth would you want to run a grinder backwards? So, and that kind of looks factory to me. I mean, it's painted gray. I mean, kind of blends in there. So it doesn't make any sense to me why you'd, why you'd want that. In forward, it runs the dust collector and the grinder. And in reverse, it runs just the grinder. So maybe that's a clue. Uh, it, in reverse operation, it ignores the dust collector. So that's the way it's wired from the factory there. So if anyone's got any insight in that, I'd love to hear it. And uh, this is pretty much just the condition. I got it off of the off the truck and got it running and just to make sure everything ran good. Alrighty. Well, that's my new toy and... I still got to find a home for it here in the shop. It's just kind of sitting out in the middle where we offloaded everything. But, uh, okay. Uh, stay tuned for more videos on uh, when we finally get a VFD on this thing and how we go about it. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.